right back at you. Peter, why Alaska? Alaska had a huge effect on me when I first came here. This is me in Alaska. I've just proposed to Megan Louise O'Neill. It's July 30th, 2009, and we're in the heart of the Denali National Park in Alaska, atop a small mountain. Well, some might call it a hill. I, I like to think of it as a tiny mountain. It just sounds better. We had been together for about a year and a half, and I brought Megan to Alaska under the guise that this whole trip is one giant birthday present. Huge mistake. No one in my income bracket plans a trip to Alaska for a birthday. She was on to me. She knew the whole time. This is Megan right after I proposed. When you go back and you look at that camera with all the times I winked, it's because I knew to wink. I did. You'll look at the camera and you'll be like, why is she winking? It was because, like, yeah, you're tricky. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Let's look through the footage. Okay, so there was the hotel. Yeah, okay, that was the one. Uh, and, and then I think when, yeah, when we were talking out there, but that's it. That was the only times when we were in the middle of a... Oh, okay, that's a double wink. That one's going to be hard. I think basically what we're dealing here with is a classic case of irony, you know, or more specifically dramatic irony. And if you're like me and you haven't cracked a textbook open in a while, well, here you go. Dramatic irony, the situation where the audience is aware of something of which the character is ignorant. Therefore, the character acts in a way that's totally inappropriate to the situation or expects the opposite of what fate holds in. Basically, you and Megan being the audience and me being the ignoramus. Um, I, I'm just going to let this scene play out on its own. This is from the day before the proposal. Thank God you're not very good at being sneaky. Neither are you. Oh, really? Yeah. Say that real loud where the camera can hear it. You're not. <laughs> Say Peter is not very good at being sneaky. Peter is not very good at being sneaky. And that is the look of blissful ignorance. But that's not really what matters. What really mattered to me. I'm just glad she said yes. Yes. And let's not forget where this all started. In 2000, my buddy Jamie Gorski, who had grown up in Alaska, invited me to come up and help him teach an arts camp for underprivileged native kids in the Matsu Valley. We had lots of free time, so Jamie showed me all over Alaska. We went climbing. His family, the Gorskis, took me camping in Denali. We went whitewater rafting. It was an amazing time, and I was developing a true love for the 49th state. By the time 2009 rolled around, I had to take Megan. I was running an apartment complex and saving every penny to be able to put her on a plane and then on a train and get her to Denali, but hopefully still keeping one surprise intact. And what are you most looking forward to when we get to Denali? There was one surprise for our first night in Denali that Megan did not know about. I don't know what it is. It's a surprise. And it's happening at 9 o'clock. Three words. Let's get started. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Why? I don't know, I really shouldn't be. But it's gonna be fun. Green means go! Green means go! We're rocky. Off road! Off road! And I might do just as well as Peter. I'm doing good! I'm a little scared. I'm doing good. Yeah, and you know Rocky Bogey Ride earns full on massage later. If I give you a Rocky Ride, then I. Okay, I'm shutting off the camera. Comment? You should see my, I, I would tape you being crazy. I'd be like. <laughs> really angry. I was a little angry there first a little bit. But she didn't stay angry for too long when I showed her where we were staying for the night. The crow's nest, 
quaint little cabin that overlooked the town of Denali down below. We got some good rest because the next morning we were off on a shuttle bus into the interior of the park. The bus driver stopped. He told us to all get out that there was something incredible to see. It was Mount McKinley, the highest point in North America. Of the thousands and thousands of people that come to Denali National Park, only about 25% actually get to see Mount McKinley. It spends most of its time completely covered in clouds. I knew it was going to be a special day. After the visit of a pretty authentic looking park ranger and seeing a bunch of wild animals, caribou up close, and some caribou pretty far away, and then we hit the jackpot, something we were dying to see, grizzly bears. And not just one grizzly bear, three, a mom and her two cubs, one of them which even came down on the road and tried to get into our bus. Must have been hungry, must have smelled food. And as we watched the little cub scamper up the hill and return to his mom, at that moment, we couldn't imagine being any happier, but we would be in just a few hours. After a long bus ride, we finally got to our destination, the heart of the park, the Eielson Visitor Center. The serene landscape was gorgeous, and it was cold and damp, so we went inside for a little bit, and when we came back out, a miracle. The sun came out, clouds parted. We hiked up to the hilltop, mountaintop, sat down beside Megan. She leaned in and kissed me, told me she loved me. And I turned off the camcorder, got down on one knee, pulled out a ring box and proposed. And she said yes. And I turned back on the camera. We're getting married. You said yes. Now most girls can't remember what the guy said before he proposed. Can you remember at all anything he said to you? You want to spend the rest of your life with me? You had a secret. It wasn't for my birthday. When you go back and you look at that camera with all the times I winked. And you know what? If she knew, she knew. If she winked, she winked. What mattered to me was she was mine. And I was hers. And it was going to be that way for good. And before we left Alaska, we stopped in Anchorage to see the Gorskis. Jamie and his baby Kaylee and his wife Laura. And as we said goodbye to Alaska, we couldn't help but think that it all felt like a dream. Like so many wonderful things had happened and it was just too good to be true. It was such an incredible journey. And we think of this story often because it reminds us of what we're going through right now with the wedding giveaway and how the, the support of friends and family and even strangers has been overwhelmingly wonderful. We never thought we would have a fan page, let alone over 1,200 fans of people who are just taking time out of their day to help someone else for no other reason than helping them. Even going on YouTube and watching my silly videos so many times. We just want to let everyone know who has been supporting us through this time how grateful we are for everything you've done for us and how much time you've taken to support us. And we also want to thank the sponsors for creating this giveaway opportunity. Regardless of what happens, regardless of the outcome of the giveaway, we can't do anything but express our gratitude for the experience, for the journey, the ability to make new friends and reconnect with old ones. We feel honored to be part of the top 10 or top 11 as it is now. We wish all the couples the best. All of their stories are so unique and compelling and we feel honored to be among them. Best of luck to all and I would like to apologize profusely to the sponsors. I'm so sorry I will not be there Friday night. Um, work will not permit it, um, but I will be there in spirit and uh, I will be sending you an email uh, and uh, hopefully be meeting you sometime in the future in person. Thank you for everything. This journey has been a dream.